time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to blank. Hey. Hey everyone, welcome to Power Hour Live Tuesday, October 8th. S&P up 50, NASDAQ up 260, Russell up 5, Dow up 130, gold down 1%, uh, silver down 4%, bonds a little bit red, notes a little bit green, 10-year yield flat, oil down, oil a little reversal, down over 4%, natty gas a little bit red, soybeans red, corn red, wheat unchained, pretty unchanged. Euro and the pound pretty flat. Bitcoin down 2%. Not actually sure where the VIX is. VIX futures down 5%. For whatever reason, on toss, my my uh, percentage on my VIX has been messed up all day. I tried to restart and everything. Did not correct. But it's sitting at 21.36. My uh, VIX on that little push up. Uh, stopped a few call sides, still a little bit green. I've still got my 945 tranche that has had no stops and that's on the twenties and 55s. Uh, otherwise all the other ones have had one side stopped. Uh, my price action VIX, done a few tranches up about a little over 1100. I closed out my RIC for a small profit this morning to free up strikes for my BIX. Uh, double calendars, I put on a one, two, one, three. Both of those are green. My two, three is up about 8%. My three, four is up a little bit. My five, seven is up 10%. I closed out half my six, seven at 20%. And the rest is currently up about 29%. Put on an early Wooga, which is already out of range with this push up. Then I put on a, a uh, my 145 Wooga, but I used NDX to avoid strike conflict, so it's still in range. Uh, but this price push is. Uh, a little relentless since about noon today. Uh, no one DTE today because the VIX had contracted overnight. And I think that is about it. Chad, how's your day? Well, it's been pretty frustrating, really. Um, I did I did do a one DTE um, booked, uh, cut half at 25% and then uh, I ended up getting out of it here. In, uh, what time was that? About 15 minutes ago as the price, the further up it went, the, the more it hurt it. So it was an $1,100 winner. AM number one, uh, 20, 40, 60 and out. My lunchtime number one was a full stop on this nasty little down move. And then, and then you know, it bounced immediately. And then I got stopped out after 20% on this nasty little push up. So these, these nasty little pushes just continue to frustrate. Um, and, you know, they're not huge in terms of price movement, but they're huge in relative to what price has done the entire day. Um, and then I have an early Wooga that's, it's still in play, but barely. And I have um, a regular Wooga that's also still in play, but barely. 
So overall for my TLC and one DT, I'm down 630 bucks. And yeah, premiums are just so low right now. I, I, I'm not going to do a five wide with these nasty little price moves that have been happening. And I'm already in a five wide Wooga. <clears throat> so I'm just going to keep that so I don't have to add any more risk of being stopped out on a five wide. Sounds like you were yelling at the Chiefs or the Royals or your son's football game last night. Uh, would have been Friday night's game, <laughs> um, mostly. A little bit last night. Not too bad last night. All-time highs, 57.67. We're currently at 57.47, so 20 points below. Quite a little bounce back from yesterday's lows, which got down to 56.89-ish. Yeah, it was a good day to be a KC fan yesterday, Moel. My youngest son broke his mile record, ran it in like five minutes and 44 seconds. My oldest nice. son's football team beat their arch rival. Who's that? Chiefs, Smithville. Okay. The Chiefs and the Royals won, so it was a good day. Yeah, Stone uh, played three quarters of the freshman game and then played two quarters of the JV game. And he's got one quarter left this week. If um, Friday is a blowout, he can play a quarter in the varsity game, which it will be a blowout because they play St. Joe Benton. It was terrible. Uh, chess master. Yeah, so VXX has contracted about 4%. Um. On the graph, it's showing it might be down a little bit, but I think it's probably up a little bit depending on where the bid ask pricing is. So, I mean, it's not, you know, this is out in November 15 cycle, so it's not going to move too much in a day. Lando, is that your alma mater? Yeah, um, we beat a team oh. 65 to nothing that beat Benton. So draw your conclusions there. But that was Stone's first JV game. He did really, really well. Played St. James Academy, who's Kansas powerhouse. Um, let's see. So I didn't do any, I didn't do any day trading in stocks this morning. I've been, I've been doing a little bit of futures trading on MES, a tiny green there, but uh, as far as individual stocks today, DJT is up again. It's up about almost 14%. Robin Hood's up 10%. Uh, DocuSign up seven and a half, Affirm up seven, NVIDIA up four. Square up four, Netflix up three. Netflix approaching all time highs. It's currently at 722, all time highs over 725. Roku up two yeah. and a half. I got a Netflix Mighty 90 that was a loser this morning. It kept me from being green. It was a good looking Mighty 90 too. Tesla up two, Apple up one and a half. On the red side, Baidu and Baba are down over 7%. A little pullback in Chinese stocks. SMCI down over 6 Coinbase down 2 SPX touching its upside expected move right now. NDX blew through it. Upside expected move a little over an hour after the market opened, and it's been kind of trending along it. It's pushed above it now.
Uh, I'm not going to trade anything in Tesla based on a robo taxi event, but <laughs> we can look at something. What are you, are you bearish or bullish? Neutral. It's already had a pretty decent IV contraction today. Okay. We can just do like an iron condor or something. Over 20% on this one. Little down move now, if it'll stay there. My early Wooga needs to get down in the low 40s. I have my one DTE that I transformed yesterday into an upside vertical that would need to get above 55, uh, 57.70 today for that max profit to hit. So we'll probably just book minimum profit on that one. Unless we decide we're going to all-time highs today. Doesn't look like S&P wanted to get through that expected move. No, definitely a little reaction off of it for sure. Okay. So, Moel, so you're, so you're buying the, you're buying the 10 wide wings one day to expiration, but you're still selling the interesting. Okay. Appreciate you sharing. I will, I'll take a closer look at that. Yeah, you'll definitely, I mean, you'd, you would need portfolio margin for sure. Steve, you want to you answer Michael's question there? You want me to? Uh, welcome, Michael Mickle. Uh, the last hour of the day, do you trade or just review open? So... Really, um, we we started Power Hour live streaming for Power Hour because we used to do a very specific kind of three tranche Power Hour trade, which you can find the 
the course and the back test and everything in the uh, with the other courses that kind of fell out of favor. And so we just continued to live stream. And so really what I've been doing during power hour is just before power hour starts, if you scroll up in this channel, you'll see my, my Wooga trades. So I, I trade that most days. I do a, the one that says e Wooga that just is my early Wooga that I put on at one twenty PM central. And then the one at one forty five. So I kind of do a couple tranches. So it, I actually put them on before, um, before we start the live stream. So that's um, what I'm talking about there. And and you can see those in my in my trade plan as well in the trade plans channel. Uh, as far as day trading, we don't day trade like we do in the morning. You just you don't have the price action or movement that makes it make sense um, like we do in the morning. So uh, so it's not like that. That that kind of day trading is really just ideal for the first hour or so of trading. But uh, so we're really just managing and trading zero DTE spreads during power hour. Yeah, and, and for me, like I'll I'll trade while we're live. Like I'll put on a power hour trade. But uh, when I was given kind of my summary of the day, I said, "This is what if you heard me say, you know, premiums are just so so narrow right now. I mean, you can't." You can get maybe a five wide iron condor, zero DTE. Um, but I'm already in one with a Wooga. So as far as my TLC trades go, like I'll I'll put them on if if the environment, the trading environment is right for it. Um, in my opinion, today with low premiums and having some, you know, decent sized moves relative to how wide I can get an iron condor. Um, you know, I'm just choosing not to put one on at this time today for my TLC trades. I've got an early Wooga on like Steve does, and I've got a regular Wooga on like Steve does. And so those are essentially the same strikes that I would be putting on if I was to do a TLC trade during this time. So again, it just all depends on what's going on for the day, but there's a lot of days where I'll say, all right, I'm putting on a power hour number two. And I post it in my channel uh, during this time. I mean, that, yeah, that does happen, but it just depends. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. And make sure you're Michael, you or anybody else new here too. Um, the trade plans channel. That's where I post my trade plan each month. You know, if I have changes and things, I, I post that there both a little recap video as well as a, a Google doc sheet with the different back tests and things on it. Um, and then Chad's uh, trade plan. If you scroll up is in there as well. His full class on, on his whole methodology is in there as well. And then I know there's a lot of terminology and acronyms and things thrown around. So I, I directed to some, someone to this earlier but if you go to the FAQ resources channel, there's a spreadsheet called the trade hacker language cheat sheet. <laughs> so if you're confused on what something is, most likely it'll be on that sheet. Like the the trade we call Wooga, it's just one of our members profile names is Wooga and he started trading it. So he, uh, he he he's the one that kind of shared it, so we we named it after him. Currently up. My uh, OG Wooga, the one that we put on it, um, I put on at one forty five Central. It's currently up about ten percent. And really the whole basis for us doing this is a, you know, you, it, it's hard to teach every aspect of a, of a strategy in a, you know, an, in a recorded video, right. But that'll get you most of the way there. And then these live streams are really designed to kind of help fill in the gap. So you can see us doing it live and then obviously give you a chance to ask questions if you, if you have any to kind of help 
help fill in any gaps. And, and, and really the, the ultimate goal is to just kind of learn the strategy, see what everybody's doing. Cause everybody does things a little bit different and, and that's by intent. Cause the goal is for you to create your own trade plan, you know, take our ideas, take our strategies, take what we're teaching and, and build your own trade plan based on your account size, your experience level, you know, all that kind of thing. There's, there's some people who, you know, like Chad trades one or two strategies. Um, so he likes me, like me trades a bunch of different strategies and, and everybody in the community is, you know, somewhere, somewhere in between. So it really is just kind of a comfort level and, and there's no, there's no one size fits all for everybody, but it's uh, designed to kind of help you create your own trade plan around your specific situation. And then we got Krish, who likes to chime in with memes that no one really understands from time to time. Fully loaded diaper coming in hot. <laughs> I like the profile name. Um, yeah. So if you heard me talk about the trade plans channel, click on the trade plan. Every month I post my trade plan with a video and a spreadsheet. If you click on the spreadsheet, there's a option Omega backtest link to it. And and by the way, if you're if you're trading, you know, the tech. Chad's style of trading is really just based on price action and entering that way. Uh, some of the strategies I trade are backtest driven. So if you're going to be trading backtest type strategies, you want to make sure you use option Omega. There you go. Chad just posted a screenshot. But I'd highly recommend if you're going to be trading backtested strategies that you have option Omega. Which is the backtesting software. Well, if we can just kind of keep trucking along here. My last tranche of Bix went in on the 45 and 50 strikes, only five wide. So we'd have to just keep chopping where we are for that one to pin. But And my last piece of my price action BIC is on the 40s and 50s. It's nice and centered. Ah, very nice, Moel. We had a lot of fun in Cabo. The amount of development going on there, I was, I was shocked. There's so much development going on there. Oh, nice. 
what is that? What is that going on over there? So we went to a beach. That's kind of right in front of, I don't know what resort it was resort. It was, but off to the side, there's this, I mean, the biggest retaining walls I've ever seen. I mean, it looked like the great wall of China. What is that all about? Hey, Chad, Chessmaster was asking about details on your Netflix trade. I'll bring yeah, it up I, on my I, screen if you want to. Yeah, go ahead. I was doing something with my trades here. All right, I've got it up here if you want to talk about it. Um, let's see. I think you probably took a mighty 90 right yeah. here, didn't you? Yeah, I ended up getting, and then I added to it. I got out. Oh, man. Okay, so it would have been not after, uh, just before the two consecutive red bars. Uh, Yeah, not right those two. No, what time was that? Ten oh five. No, I got out before that. Uh, on that on that push up. This yeah, one here. Red, th yep, that push up. Once it once it broke through that consolidation, there I got out. Gotcha. That big that bigger push up. Yep. Yep, right there. Yeah. So this yeah, is I mean, it, it, I got out about for what I would have. If I'd have waited for the two bars that have been about the same. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a situation where, yeah, you get, you just kind of, kind of have a, a point of saying uncle, if it, you know, if it never pulls back in your favor. Um, and so like Chad said, he, he kind of got out right when it pushed above this little consolidation area. Um, the other thing you can do is have a kind of a, a timed exit. You know, if you, if you don't get your two bars in your favor, in a certain amount of time, then you could just exit. Um, you know, if that's 10 a.m., that would have been right here, which is the same as two two red bars here too. So uh, any of those are good exit points for a trade that just kind of keeps grinding against you like this. Yeah, and I was right in the middle of a Zoom call that I had at 9.30 today. So I was kind of keeping one eye on it while I was talking on the Zoom call. And then when I saw it start to push, I just closed it so I didn't have to look at it anymore while I was trying to focus on the Zoom call. And he's he's asking, were there any bullish trades that you took? I mean, I posted my trades. So you took a Baidu and an Apple. Let's see. They were all Mighty 90s. So there's a bullish Mighty 90 in Baidu. I assume that's what you took. Yep. Nice winner. Pull back, volume pop, two green bars, done. Yep. And then Apple. That was also a mighty 90, so that must have been. I added to it. Yeah, so started it here and then added here, I guess. Yep. And they got two bars out. Yep, exactly. Oh, he meant... Was there any bullish trades on Netflix after? I mean, I, once I closed out my position, I didn't monitor Netflix. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, once it's kind of started shopping sideways, you could look at that as a upside continuation runner. But, I mean, you're, you know, you're the thing's chopping all day long until it's just been kind of grinding higher, so. Yeah, I... I end all that by like 9.30 so I can focus on TLC trades. SPX, try to poke back above the expected move area. Take the new high of day.
Uh, I'll let Chad answer for himself, but I, I usually just choose a specific dollar amount. So obviously, if, I mean, if you're trading Netflix, that's going to be different than Apple, which is different than Tesla, which is different than everything, right? So you really want to, you want, you, you, you know, when you create your trade plan and your position sizing, you want to base that on a, a dollar amount, or that's what I do. Yeah. So, sure. so if you, so if I want to, you know, and, and I, and I don't do it the same every day. You know, some days I am just, you know, I like the price action better. So I might go with a little bigger size. Some days I go a little smaller size, but you know, whether that's $500 or a thousand or 5,000 or whatever it is, um, you know, you just got to do the calculation for the, for the specific contracts that you're trading. So if we look at meta, for example, you're trading the three day cycle, let's say, or I was going to get into a trade, you know, right now. And I'd, I'd be looking at something, you know, slightly out of the money or right around the money. So let's say I chose the 595 calls. Well, those are trading for about $5 and 70 cents. So if I'm going to, if I'm going <clears> to, <throat> if I'm going to use a thousand dollars of buying power per trade, I can only do two of those contracts. Does that make sense, Michael? Yeah. So what I, and what I tell people, is I tell people, um, for me, I'm going in medium size. So my medium size trades are about 3000 in buying power, give or take 500 bucks on each side. Um, above 3,500, 4,000 in buying power is large size. And, you know, 2,500 or below is small. So there may be times I might say, okay, I'm just going in small here. So that would tell you like you, you determine what your range for small, medium and large is. So if you want to kind of, if I'm going in small, then you, and you want to go in small as well, then you use your, what your small would be. Not necessarily what my small would be. So yeah, and you and, can and, look at that as a, a percentage of your portfolio. Sure. The other thing to keep in mind is, you know, if you're if you're trading on um, Fridays, you're going to be using the seven day to expiration options. Well, they move a lot slower than when we're trading on Thursday and we're using the one DTE options. You know, so if if to kind of keep your risk a little bit more similar, you may want to use a little bit smaller position size on a Thursday because those are one day options and they move a lot quicker, both, both to the good side and the bad, right? If it goes in your favor, your profits come quicker. If it goes against you, your losses come quicker than they would on a seven day option. So you want to kind of keep that in mind too, when you're, you may want to choose a little bit different dollar amount position size if you're trading on Thursday versus Friday, because of just the way the options, how quickly they can move. So it's always the ones seven days or less. So it just depends on what day it falls on. Like today is Tuesday. So it's always going to be the three DTE. I'm, I think I lay that out in the course as far as which expirations fall on which days. But stocks only have, you know, Friday expiration. So it's always going to be whichever ones are under our seven days or less. Now on Friday, you know, if you're, if, you know, once you get, experience you could also potentially use zero day options you just got to understand that they move extremely quickly both directions when it goes against you losses can accumulate fast profits can accumulate quick as well but most of the time sometimes i'll trade zero day options but most of the time it's either you know one one through seven dte So these options here, so today's Tuesdays would be three-day options. On Wednesdays, would be two-day options. On Thursdays, it'd be one-day options. Friday, seven-day options. SPX chopping at its expected move line. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was kind of looking at that. Yeah, so BIX, uh, yeah, essentially it's just um, managing the put vertical and the call vertical. And there's a lot of different variations of that. I, I did a, I put it, I did do a video. If you go to the BIC channel and you go up to the top on the pin, I did a, a high level overview and then it really comes down to kind of building, building out your trade plan around those. All right, so I just got into a straddle because it's been kind of chopping up there by the expected move. So I did a 5750 straddle with my power hour trade. I couldn't stay out. I was tired of looking at my Wooga. So I just posted it in the... In my channel there. I don't do straddles often, but I will do them sometimes. It's simply a straddle because the premium is so small. NDX just keeps on grinding higher. I need to pull back an NDX and SPX. Yeah, if we don't get a pullback here, this will be my third Wooga loss in a row in my Tasty Works account. Wooga's not losing today. He called me, told me. It's Tuesday, it's an up day. It's pretty much a lock. Well, I take that back. My I had a twenty three dollar winner in that Tasty Works account. Is that the line on the Chiefs next week? Oh, they get they're on a buy. So yeah, they're guaranteed not to lose. That's pretty cool. In the post game interview last night, Mahomes said he's he said I'll be at the Royals game Wednesday. Yeah, I think fully loaded the uh, number of monitors. That's totally a personal preference. I know some people use like an iPad for certain stuff, maybe like Discord or whatever, and then use their computer for toss or whatever else. But I personally I have I have a PC with four monitors, and then I've also got 
a Mac. So it's a totally separate system. So, it's, so essentially I have five monitors. Are you really going to complain about the refs again, Naughty Dog? <laughs> Chad, give him the stats. Yeah, I mean, I, I could give you the facts if you want. <laughs> How about the uh, the dude who got the interception for the Saints, who used to be a chief, whose brother is a backup dancer for Tay Tay? That big boy that rumbling, stumbling out of the end zone. He was. He was trucking. Yeah, I just got stopped on my call side on this last little price action bick. Here at Navigation Trading, we always make sure everyone has the facts. Just grinding higher. What are you on the 5750 straddle? Yep. All right, my Bix don't really want any higher. My Wugas definitely don't want any higher. Vix is not through lows of day. Straight up since noon. Oh, this can get ugly again. It's big moves, I tell you.
Well, got anything tomorrow or is it not till Thursday when all that starts CPI and stuff? Well, we got all kinds of Fed speakers. Uh, and tomorrow we've got FOMC minutes released at 1 p.m. Central. We've got, as far as Fed speakers, we've got Bostic and Logan pre-market. We've got Goolsby and Jefferson in the late morning. We've got FOMC minutes released at 1 p.m. We've got a couple of Fed speakers after the market. And then, yeah, Thursday, CPI pre-market, Friday, PPI pre-market, and some more Fed speakers. Just relentless. Yep. The old straddle's not looking good. My early Wuga needs below 45 to break even. I'd take a drop down to 45. Nice just to have some muted price movement. Didn't really want to see all time highs today. So I say, Elliot, days of the week with Bix are random, random at best. Ugly, ugly, ugly. I thought Monday, Tuesday, Friday were the best. Tuesday's getting fired. Are you bringing in Wednesday or Thursday? VIX ticked through low or ticked down two lows of day. Twenty one point one four. But SPX and NDX have been pushing through highs of day since. For about the last hour.
My five seven is now up almost sixteen percent. May hit twenty percent by the end of the day. Those calendars love the up move with the volatility staying bid. Two threes up over ten percent. Calendars love when the when SPX is moving higher, but volatility is not crushing. I mean, the VIX is down pretty good today, but you know, like I was saying, SPX has been pushing through highs of day for an hour, but VIX is now just down to lows of day. Start with a move down to at least 50. Start there. Eighteen minutes till the bell. Eight minutes till MOC. Fifty-five butterfly trading for about a buck twenty-five, buck twenty. So, if you're new here, the trade I do at the end of the day is the one I call the Magic Mahomes. You can find that course in the transformer sessions. And it's chess master's favorite. He's been on a cold streak, that's for sure. Keep everybody on their toes around here. Come on back down to 50. Come on down. The water's warm. Teaching an options trading class tonight to the Canadian Association for Technical Analysis. Oh, wow. I tried to tell them I don't use technical analysis, but they still wanted me, so.
Hey, Prakash, I see you posted in the Zoom chat. Do me a favor, post in the uh, Zero DTE, the Zero Live chat channel in Discord. Chad's uh, TLC course is in the Trade Plan channel. <laughs> I should show him my indicator, Chris. Good idea. <laughs> All right, it looks like we might get into home homes a little bit earlier. Well, oh, maybe not. This flashing, flashing higher credits. MOC in about two and a half minutes. Crazy, the VIX went down six and a quarter percent with this big move up. Wrong direction, get back down. Need a big cell number. Three points up since noon. MOC getting ready to come out. 20 billion south side. The Fox South Base and Balance, the SP 500, 895 million to the south side. 895 million to the south side. Down 30, 28 spot, 1 million to the buy side. Get back down.
quick in the 50s and 55s. Fifty fives look like they're trading for about a buck seventy. Did you get stopped out of your straddle? Nope, not yet. In fact, I was getting close to profit target. But. Well, now probably not, right? Yeah, now, now, now not. Mm-mm. Need to put down move or it's gonna be another full loss wooga. <laughs> Stop is at nine seventy. It's training at seven forty, six ninety. It's right about the break even. I mean, if I could have gotten any down move whatsoever towards 50. Actually, if it just would have stayed where it was before this bar, when this bar started. Fifty fives are getting close to filling. When we want a big drop, we can't get it. Don't want it, we get it. Nibbling on my 55s, filled on the 55s. My bot also filled. All right. Now let's tank. Yep, needed to tank. Nice tank job would work well. It just too strong today. Hmm. That was about 40 cents for profit target there. Let's 
sell off, baby, sell off. Come on down. Price is right. Yeah, the thing. Back down to fifty. Fifty would be nice. Fifty would be real nice. Forty five would be even better. Oh yeah. I'd take forty five. Even with my straddle. Just can't get any legs to the downside. Two minutes. Start dropping. Big old collapse. Breakthrough, breakthrough. One minute. Build that 20% profit target. Nice. Now if it gets down to 50, I'm just going to see if it'll pin. I mean... Mahomes needs below 52 to win. There we go. Come on down, baby. Get a 50 pin. Yeah. My vertical is not filling. Oh, oh, ding, oh, ding, oh. ding. Little markup on the close, but 51.17. Oh, boy. That's a dandy winner for me in that straddle because I let the, let, let the rest of it expire. My Magic Mahomes will be about a 16, about six, no, a little under 1700. So no lock, but winner, winner. Wooga was a loser. Bix ended up being plus a mm, little over 800. Price action Bix. Ended up being well, my trade steward went blank, so I don't know. Anyway, it was a winner. All right, all have a good night as far as live streams go. Tomorrow is the ninth, 
So I'll be leading the day trading live stream at the market open tomorrow. And then we will be back for power hour. Have a good night.